Hello everyone. In today's class, we will be understanding how does water get to top of the trees. Yes. So today we will be understanding how the water will be transported to the top of the water. So for that, we have to understand how circulation of food and water takes place in plants and tree. Right. So let's begin this particular video. So first of all, let's understand how water among water and food, how exactly water will be transported. So in order to transport water to the top of the tree, we require a specialized tissue called as xylem tissue because transportation of water will be happening with the help of xylem tissue that is present in the root, stem, leaves. And therefore, these xylem tissues in the root stem and leaves are interconnected to each other. Now the question is, what is this xylem, right? So let's understand all about xylem. So if you would have studied tissue chapter in your last, uh, I can say class, that is uh, uh, in 9th standard, you, you would have understood what are the different types of cells that is present in the xylem tissues. So xylem is responsible for the transportation of not just water but also minerals and they are made up of tracheids, xylem vessels, xylem parenchyma and xylem fibers. Now what is this tracheids? Tracheids and xylem uh, uh, vessels they are involved in transportation of water. So tracheids are less involved in transportation of water whereas xylem vessels are their main function is transportation of large amount of water. Now the question comes, what is the importance of parenchyma and xylem fibers, right? So xylem parenchyma is the only living cell among other xylem cells in the xylem. Xylem, which is a complex permanent tissue, is made up of four cells. So among these four cells, xylem parenchyma is only the living cells, whereas rest all are dead cells. Now the question now what is the importance of this dead cell called as xylem fiber? Xylem fiber will be providing strength to other cells of the xylem. So tracheids and xylem vessels they are together involved in conducting the elements. When I say elements it means minerals, ions and water. So in this particular image you are able to see different cells of xylem that is Tracheids over here present in between the xylem vessels, right? And in between you are also able to see some of the living cells that is xylem parenchyma, right? I mean sorry, xylem parenchyma is over here in which uh, you are able to see even the nucleus. So this is parenchyma, this greenish color is parenchyma, xylem parenchyma and these blue colored one is tracheids. And the purple colored one uh, you are able to see over here is vessel elements, xylem vessel, right? Which will be having pits in order to transport the water, conduct water and ions. And fibers aren't mentioned, uh, you know, you know, shown uh, over here. But xylem vessels main function, uh, sorry, the fibers main function is giving the strength for the other cells of the xylem. Now let's understand how xylem will be able to transport water from lower part of the plant to upper part of the plants. So let's understand about transportation of water. Root cells that is taking uh, up the ions from the soil will be creating a concentration difference between the root and soil. I repeat once again root cells which is having the root hairs as you can see in this particular gif it will be taking up the water right they will uh, taking up the ions as well as water and they will be causing for this uh, you know difference in the uh, concentration right and the column of water will be therefore rising up so as and when some ions are intaken water also will be attracted from the soil and it will be getting into the root hairs and as and when ions are getting up to the you know plants and trees even water will be also following these ions, right? Now, as you all know, if you 
eat salty items you feel like drinking water so same way here as well ions is nothing but the salt ions i can say which is present in the soil when wherever they go even water also follow it right so this is how the column is created from the root to stem and finally to the leaves so this is how you are able to see transportation of ions and water across the root stem and finally leaves also i'll be understanding why this water is getting out from the leaves right for that we should be understanding about transpiration so in very tall plants and trees what exactly happens is we get to see transpiration now the question comes from transpiration doesn't happen in smaller plants definitely it will be happening so transpiration is nothing but evaporation of water from the aerial surface or upper part of the plants and trees right so they will be going out from the plants and trees through the pores on the leaves and some of the time even stems you get to see this pores called as stomata so transpiration will be causing this suction pressure they will be actually pulling the water upwards right so since transpiration is causing for the movement of the water out the pressure is created to take up more water and ions from the soil right so this is how water will be transported that is definitely with the help of xylem tissue and the suction pressure that is created by the transpiration also there are other importance of transpiration let's quickly understand about other importance of transpiration as well so transpiration is just a type of evaporation so imagine um water if it is you know evaporated from our body what exactly happens we call it as a sweating so it will be able to act like a cooling effect right sweating is a cooling effect it will be able to regulate the temperature same way in the plants as well cause of transpiration there is going to be regulation of temperature in the plants definitely it is also going to cause for the upper movement of the water in the plants so this is all about transportation of water in the plants now coming to transportation of food molecules so transportation of food molecules is going to be with the help of the tissue called as phloem right now what is the importance of the phloem phloem is responsible for transportation of food but the question is ma'am what is this phloem phloem is complex permanent tissue just like xylem which is also made up of different types of cells called as cell tubes companion cell phloem parenchyma and also phloem fibers also called as bas fibers right now cell tube is the conducting element in the phloem that is they are involved in transportation of food molecules in the phloem whereas companion cell will be able to act like a companion for the cell tube because it is the living cell or life support for the cell tube and the cell tube is dead that's that's why they want a living cell to support and phloem parenchyma will be able to act like a filling uh you know cells in the phloem and bast fiber fibers also called as phloem fibers is also you know able to show the similar function like xylem fiber that is going they are going to give the strength to the other cells of the phloem right so <clears throat> with the help of these many cells phloem is going to be helpful in the transportation of the food also i'll be further explaining so it they will be carrying the product of photosynthesis from the roots to other part of the plants now what is this product of photosynthesis all will say now mom it is glucose students glucose which is produced in the leaves won't be directly transported in in the phloem so this phloem will be uh, you know i mean the sorry the photosynthetic product that is glucose will be quickly converted into the you know the non soluble insoluble starch and then they will be converted into sucrose and this sucrose will be transported in the phloem from the uh, you know they will be uh, going to the different part of the body right so they will be carrying the product of photosynthesis a small mistake not from the roots actually from the leaves to other parts of the plant right now let's understand more about transportation of food in the plants so transportation of the food that is now the glucose is in the form of sucrose which has been produced in the leaves during photosynthesis glucose has converted into sucrose for the transportation 
right glucose is one sugar molecule right it is monosaccharide sucrose is disaccharide it is made up of a sugar and fructose now transportation of the food in the plants that is transportation of the sucrose also some other food molecules like amino acid so this transportation of the food will be utilizing energy that is atp right and the process of transportation of these food molecules with the utilization of the energy is called as translocation and movement of these food substances are going to be both the directions also called as bidirectional movement of the food you get to see that is from the leaves as you can see in this particular image source of the glucose you get to see in the leaf so this glucose suddenly will be converted into starch and then they will be converted into sucrose for the transportation and now this sucrose will be translocated to different parts of the plants it can be they will be going to roots some of the time they will be going to leaves and in the leaves root or in the stem or in the other part of the plant if you consider they will be stored in the form of fruits different types of fruits also in some of the vegetables we eat leaves right and some of the vegetables we eat roots so in these different part of the plants you are able to see stored form of glucose right so this is why the movement of the food molecules we say bidirectional or i can say both the direction because the food from the leaf will be going to the stem will be going to the top part of the uh, plant or trees or it will be going to the roots right moving further that is excretion in the plants i'm very sure many of you all of you have understood about the transportation of food and water right now moving to excretion in the plants it's not that only we excrete but also plants do excrete in the solid liquid and gaseous form so you all know if the plant has to excrete in the gaseous form definitely the waste is either carbon dioxide during the respiration process whereas oxygen is excretory waste which is gaseous in photosynthesis which is simply removed by the simple diffusion whereas also uh, you will be able to see excretion in the plants in the gash uh, in the water form in the fluid form that is with the help of transpiration so what you get to see during transpiration movement of the water from the plants going out of water that is nothing but you know water is removed as a waste only right and also plants will be able to excrete in the semi solid or solid form that is if you would have heard or uh, you know uh, experienced resins gums these all are semi solid waste that is going out of the plants and trees so they will be usually stored in the vacuoles or in the leaves so sometimes leaves will be falling off and that is also referred as the waste right and sometimes some chemicals which is stored in the vacuoles they are also referred as you know uh, excretory waste of the plants so they are stored in the old xylems right so this is about excretion in the plants and definitely some of the waste also excreted in the uh, through the roots as well that is they will be simply excreted into the soil so some crystalline uh, salts like oxalates will be excreted into the soil by the roots so you are able to see excretory waste in the plants are going to be gaseous water and solid form gaseous water i'm very sure you already knew but about semi solid solid leaves we sometimes we consider as waste when it is falling off from the trees and plants and some of the gums resins which is present in the old xylem and some chemicals in the cellular vacuoles also considered as waste and some salts will be going out from the plants through the roots that is also waste so that's all for today my dear students let's meet in the coming video and we will be discussing about excretion in animals that is in humans so until then bye bye